Assalamualaikum and Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic which we are going to discuss today is the superior vena cava. What is the superior vena cava? It is the white and the short vein which receives the blood from the all upper part of the body. And the vessel which receives the blood from the lower part of the body towards the heart is the inferior vena cava. Now we are going to discuss the formation of the superior vena cava. This is the superior vena cava which forms at the level of the first coastal cartilage by the junction of right brachiocephalic vein and the left brachiocephalic vein. And how the brachiocephalic vein is formed? It is formed at the level of the sternoclavicular joint by the combination of two veins, the right subclavian vein and the internal jugular vein. Now we are going to discuss about the course of the superior vena cava. This is the superior vena cava. It is 7 cm long. It begins at the level of first coastal cartilage. This is the fibrous pericardium of the heart. It pierces the fibrous pericardium at the level of the second coastal cartilage. Then it drains its blood into the right atrium of the heart at the level of the third coastal cartilage. If we are going to revise it, it means it is 7 cm long, begins at the level of first coastal cartilage, pierces the pericardium at the level of second coastal cartilage and drains its blood into the right atrium of the heart at the level of the third coastal cartilage. Now we are going to discuss about the relation of the superior vena cava. As you can all see here, this green structure which I have uh, highlighted here is the superior vena cava. This one, it carries the blood from the upper part of the body and drains it into the right atrium of the heart. If we are going to discuss the relations, then anteriorly there presents the sternum with the manubrium sternae and the internal thoracic vessels. These are the internal thoracic vessels. If we see posteriorly, then there presents the trachea and the right vagus. And if we are going to discuss medially, if we are going to remove the sternum here, now we can see medially there presents the arch of aorta along with the brachiocephalic trunk. Arch of aorta and the brachiocephalic trunk. And laterally there presents the right lung along with the right pleura. Now we are going to discuss the tributaries of the superior vena cava. Tributaries are the veins which carry the blood from the uh, different parts of the body and drain themselves into the superior vena cava. Basically, this is the superior vena cava. This is the azygous vein. And the tributaries which drains into the superior vena cava, their blood, are the azygous vein, the right brachiocephalic, the left brachiocephalic, and the azygous vein. Along with these veins, there are the two other veins which drain their blood into the superior vena cava are the mediastinal veins and the pericardial veins. Now we are going to discuss the important clinical which is related to the superior vena cava is its obstruction. As we all know, this is the azygous vein. If the superior vena cava is obstructed above the level of the azygous vein, then the venous blood from the upper half of the body is carried by the azygous vein and the collateral vessels. That's why whenever there is an obstruction above the azygous vein, the vessels present on the chest becomes dilated up to the level of <coughs> coastal margin. But when the superior vena cava is obstructed below the level of the azygous vein, then the blood from all over the body, inferior part of the body, is carried by the inferior vena cava via the femoral vein. This is the femoral vein and it drains its blood into the inferior vena cava which drains its blood into the heart. That's why the vessels present on the chest as well as the abdomen both become dilated. In the above obstruction, the vessels of the chest up to the level of only coastal margins are dilated, but now the vessels, superficial vessels present on the chest as well as the abdomens are dilated. This is the super epigast superficial epigastric vein. This is the lateral thoracic vein and the vein which connects the lateral thoracic vein which that of the superficial epigastric vein is the thoracoepigastric vein clinical is the superior vena cava syndrome. It is basically the group of the symptoms caused by the obstruction of the superior vena cava which is a short white vessel carrying circulating blood into the heart. What are the symptoms? First which is most important is the positive Pemberton sign. What is the Pemberton sign? In this we ask the patient to lift their arms up so that their hands will touch their face. In this scenario if the Burton sign is positive, then there will be the facial congestion or the cyanosis the patient will have. The patient suffering from CVC syndrome will have difficult breathing, facial puffiness, headache, and the edema of the neck, which is referred to as the collar of stoves. 
Thank you very much for watching my video.